Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Moxie DIY in Java. I'm Michelle. Today's video is part of the minis playlist and I will be making lots of Halloween DIYs that can fit on your tiered tray or your small space. So grab your cup of coffee or your favorite beverage and join me. Okay, we are going to start out with the easiest of the six DIYs. And these Beetlejuice decals I cut out with my Silhouette Portrait. And I just found the Beetlejuice logo on my search engine and copied them to my Silhouette. And it's as easy as that, just apply it like a sticker. If you don't have a Silhouette or Cricut or things like that, you can use stickers. Um, you could also buy things like this off of Etsy for pretty cheap. So super easy. I saw these stripes and that was immediately what I thought of was the man Beetlejuice. For our base, we are going to be using this cutting board from the Dollar Tree, but you can use any base that you want. That's just what I had on hand. Now these tags, again, I saw them and I immediately thought tombstones. Maybe that's just my creepy mind at work, but that's what I thought when I saw the rounded tops. I'm going to be using a sharpie to add the names to these tombstones and when I do that I like to do the middle letter first and then work my way out. It just seems to help me get the spacing right and also make sure that everything fits. Can you guess what this one says? You have to say it fast in order to hear it. I will solely be using these Hocus Pocus stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree. I think they're really pretty and they have that dark academia look to them that's so popular right now. Now all of these names that I'm putting on these tombstones come from a theme park and those of you who frequent Disneyland or Disney World may recognize some of them. The word here had a lot of very wide letters, so I found it was easier for me to do the last three and then once they were on to do the H. Now I'm just going to apply a thin layer of Satin Mod Podge, which is from the Plaid family. And this is just to lock in all of the rub-ons and also all of the Sharpie marker.
Now we're going to create some movement to this cemetery, but don't worry, it's not the spooky kind. We've got bats and large moths on this sticker pack, and I wanted to use them to, um, again, create some movement to the tombstones. after I got all the Spanish moss down that I wanted the base to look less like a wood board and more like dirt so I'm going to use this chippy brush I think that's the name that it's been called um, from the Dollar Tree and and pounce on black paint from Apple Barrel and hindsight being 2020 of course I would have done this before I did the Spanish moss but I thought about it afterwards <laughs> Now I'm just dry brushing down along the tombstones to make them look aged, and I will do this to the front and the back. Now to attach our critters that fly, I'm going to create a loop or a mini spiral along the base of the wire, and I'm just gonna hot glue it onto the backs of each of the tombstones. And I just have them bent at different angles. And now to accessorize, I'm going to use this crow sticker at the base of one of the tombstones. And then I'm also going to apply the fern sticker to the other one. This video is part of a monthly playlist challenge that is hosted by Corey over at Crafted by Corey. And the challenge is to create at least three minis or small items that could fit in a small space. And this month's theme is Halloween. So go check out that playlist and you will see lots and lots of inspiration and different ideas. And I am a big lover of tiered trays because it uses vertical space rather than horizontal space. So I've got tiered trays all over my house and I love decorating them and this is a great way to do it. To keep with the spooky cemetery vibe, we're going to make Death's Angel. Now I spray painted her completely black and I'm going to use this super duper fine tip paintbrush that I got from the Dollar Tree and white paint. And I am not a student of anatomy so I don't exactly know how many bones we have in our hands, but I'm just creating 
little dots and dashes along her fingers and I think it turned out pretty good. I apologize for the crazy lighting in my home right now. It was a very dark and gloomy day and the lighting did not lend itself well for filming. And I apologize, but I have to go with what I've got. I'm on other social media networks as well, including Instagram, where I like to post a lot of behind the scenes or day in the life, things that I'm reading, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in connecting with me, I would love that. My handle is Moxie DIY Java. I'm also on Pinterest under the same handle, Moxie DIY Java. And again, I just pin things that I use daily or things that sound interesting to me. So please come check me out at either of those. I would love for you to say hi. Now here I'm painting a skull face and I'm not 100% sold that I like it. So comment down below and let me know if you think she looks better with a skull face or with a blank face. Here she is with the skull face or a blank face. Let me know which one you like better. I found these truck Easter eggs at Dollar Tree this past spring and knew I could use them with something. So as you can see, I spray painted it black and I'm just going to add uh, stickers and decals and just some little things here and there. This is another one of the easiest DIYs. In my Halloween decor, I have a Sleepy Hollow Village, 
and what is Sleepy Hollow without a headless horseman? So I grabbed this army man from Dollar Tree and painted him all black, but his vest is very 21st century. So we're gonna cover that up so that he looks a little more like a revolutionary warrior. And I'm going to use this pillowcase from the Dollar Tree. It's actually pretty nice material, but it does fray pretty easily. So using uh, Fabri-Tac or glue to seal that is definitely worth doing. So all I'm doing is I'm just folding it into threes and I'm going to create a vest of sorts for his chest. I slowed this part down so you could see how I do this. I just twist the upper third of the piece of material and put it over his shoulder to create a lapel, kind of, and it also makes it thinner to go around his shoulder so that his arm can move. And then I'm just going to glue the front and the back. Now on to his cape. Now I've seen different illustrations where his cape is either red or black and I really liked the red. So once again I'm using a pillowcase from Dollar Tree. This is just a standard pillowcase, not the brocade or the zipped or anything like that. It's just a standard one. And I'm just going to cut it to size to fit him and I'm going to do a double seam so that way you don't see any of the raw edge because we will be seeing the inside of his cape. So I wanted to make sure that it was as clean looking as possible. Here I am going to pleat his cape up over his shoulder because his arm will be raised and not only does it make room for his arm to be raised but also creates some pretty cool movement with his cape. And I'm just going to use one of these little stickers as his fastener. This is the leather ribbon again from Dollar Tree and I felt like his vest was missing something so I'm going to use this leather ribbon to create a belt for his vest. And I will be using this ribbon again later for the horse's saddle and reins. Now this horse, although very cute, has blue eyes and eyelashes. And I feel like the Headless Horseman's horse should not have blue eyes and eyelashes. So we're going to go over the blue with some red and we're going to cover up the eyelashes with Sharpie.
And of course, what is a headless horseman without his jack-o'-lantern head? And now it's time for a tasty beverage. This is the chai recipe from the apple chider that I featured in a previous video. I'm making it without apple cider, so it's just gonna be chai tea latte, and it turned out really good. So if you're interested in that recipe, I will post the video up above. I did these printables on tissue paper and I am now going to use the wet tear method to get them ready to be mod podged onto the wooden planks, which I did spray paint white. Um, these printables I actually found through the search engine. I just typed in skeleton silhouette and that is how I found these. If you are liking what you're seeing, I hope you'll consider subscribing, liking, and sharing my videos. It really means a lot to me, and it will also let me know that you like this kind of content. Now I'm going to go over with this white paint from Apple Barrel and really just to clean up some of the smudging that may have happened while Mod Podging. I forgot to spray these with clear spray paint, which I usually do when I do tissue paper printing. So it did smudge a little bit, which really doesn't bother me because it kind of lends itself to a little more of a spooky vibe. And then I'm going to go over the frame with the black spray with the black paint and I'm not being very careful with it again because I want it to look old and maybe a little more spooky than normal and then to age I will add some antique wax by Waverly also of the plaid family So now I'm going to glue on the stands for these and I'm using tumbling tower blocks and to create a stand so that way these oval rounds are able to stand properly, we need to have a bit of a space at the bottom of the stand. So it's probably about the width of a popsicle stick. It's not very large, but it's just enough so that way the oval plaque can lean backwards slightly. And I'm gonna show you right here there's the space it's not very big but i did let the glue completely dry on the top of that and then i filled it in with some glue on the bottom i hope that makes sense
Until I see you in the next video, take care.